Good morning, students. Let us continue with biotic environment and the components of this biotic environment and the biodegradable and non-biodegradable substances and wastes at their disposal. Today we will discuss the abiotic environment. What is abiotic environment? Non-living components of the environment form the abiotic environment and it is also known as physical environment. Now, what are the non-living components of the environment with which the living components that means the biotic components they interact and um, as a result they get adopted to their surrounding. We have discussed in our previous class they are the sunlight, wind, rain, water, soil, temperature is also there. Now we will discuss all the abiotic components one by one. So the first is the water. Water is very important, very it's essential for the survival and growth of all living organisms and uh, what are its different uh, uses here you can see in the diagram drinking cooking bathing irrigating the field they are the common uses of water water is also used by the plants here in the picture you can see they absorb water from the soil with the help of their roots for the process of photosynthesis. As a result, they prepare their food and they grow. And all the animals and human beings, they are directly or indirectly dependent on plants only for their food. So in this way, we can say that water is very important abiotic component which affects the biotic component. And that is why conservation of water is very important and one of, one of the way of conserving water is rain water harvesting. So here in the picture you can see what is rain water harvesting? It is the process of collecting rain water in over roof or underground water tanks sorry here the spelling of underground is wrong so this here rain water is collected in tanks and then it is used for other household purposes other than drinking because it is not so pure so we can use make use of this water for household purposes other than drinking. Now the next abiotic component is the air. Air is also very important abiotic component as it is the mixture of gases now, and in which oxygen, carbon dioxide and nitrogen these are the most important gases and these gases they keep present in air. See how do we use them? Oxygen, this gas is used both by plants and the animals for the process of respiration and carbon dioxide gas it is used by plants for the process of photosynthesis. Here in the diagram you can see so it's not like that plants only take in carbon dioxide gas. They also take oxygen gas here you can see for the process of respiration plants take oxygen gas and release carbon dioxide gas during night and during day for the process of photosynthesis they take carbon dioxide gas and release oxygen gas and at the same time we also 
need oxygen gas and all the animals and human beings we need oxygen gas for the process of respiration and as a result of respiration energy is released in our body and this energy is very important for our survival next carbon dioxide gas it is used by plants for photosynthesis and uh, for their growth and uh, just we discussed that all other living beings they are dependent on plants so these two gases are very important for the plants and animals at the same time nitrogen it is also very important for the plants and the animals they are simply known as the building block of life but how and why you will study in class next abiotic component of the environment is light so the natural source of light the source of natural light is the sun only it is the ultimate natural source of sunlight and it is very important for the existence of life on the earth as plants they need sunlight for the process of photosynthesis if there won't be sunlight they won't be able to prepare their food and they won't be able to grow here in this picture you can see this the plant is growing in the presence of sunlight but if it won't get sunlight it won't be able to grow so here you can see the leaves have gone pale you know and the plant is drying up so for the growth of plant sunlight is very important and if plants will not grow if they will not prepare their food then as we are discussing again and again that there won't be life on the earth there won't be any other uh, animals or human beings on the earth and therefore it is said that light is very important it affects the uh, other biotic components and it also penetrates into the forest into the dense forest and uh, into the water bodies also and all the aquatic plants they also and the plants in dense forest they also perform the process of photosynthesis with the help of this light now plants and uh, animals they respond to this light differently let us see some examples how do some plants and animals they respond to this light morning glory this flower it blooms with sunrise and it closes down after sunset here you can see this flower it blooms with light and it closes when there is no light so in this way it responses to light sunflower it is very common and you must have seen it faces always faces towards sun you see here in all the diagrams the flower is facing towards the sun again how and why you will study in high class in mimosa pujika touch me not plant you must have heard the name and you must have seen this these leaves these leaves they open during sunrise here you see this diagram with sunrise they open and close during sunset here again the set is left so it closes during sunset so here you can see how this plant it responds to light and different animals they also show different response to light some most of the animals they are active in presence of light 
but there are some animals which are active during night in absence of light like rats cockroaches owl etc they become active during night time when there is no light next abiotic component is temperature what is temperature it is the degree of hotness or coldness of an object or a place so how much cold or how much cold and uh, how much hot or how much cold an object is this is its temperature and temperature of any object can be measured with the help of a device and that is known as thermometer you must have seen in your house now how do the different animals they respond to temperature because different animals they have different uh, uh, tolerance power of temperature some can tolerate uh, much too much temperature and some animals they can't tolerate so let us see some examples cold reason animals that means the animals that can survive in very less temperature no so examples are the penguin and polar bear penguins are the polar bear they can survive in very less temperature on the other hand tiger and elephant they are warm reason animals and camel is such an animal which can live in extremely hot reason or in desert reason actually they don't have sweat glands in their body so there is no loss of water from their body and therefore they can live for long time in sense of water one animal is buffalo it is very common we see in our surrounding and you must have seen very often this animal it uh, keeps uh, in water now so what is the reason they always cool themselves now in uh, water in summer season so what is the reason the reason is that they are black in color and they don't have efficient sweat glands due to their black color they trap more solar energy you know more heat from the sun and that's why they feel much hot that's why for cooling their body they keep um, more, uh, dipped in water next a biotic component is the soil soil is also very important a biotic component which affects all the biotic components of the environment like it provides water and minerals to the plants for their growth we earlier also we have seen that plants they take water from the soil with the help of their root and what is the importance of this water we have discussed so many times it also provides shelter to many organisms like here you can see in the diagram rat is there ants are there earthworm they all live in soil you know they have their shelter in the soil so in this way soil also affects the lives of the biotic component of the atmosphere that means the lives of the plants and the animals so this was all about the abiotic components of the environment in our next class we will discuss interaction in the environment and also we'll discuss the exercise portion of this chapter your today's homework is to prepare inside notes of this chapter from all my three videos and also draw the suitable diagrams at appropriate places
so many definitions i have given you so many diagrams i have given you so you just go through them and prepare inside notes thank you